Welcome, my friends, to episode number 49 of Raph Stuff. Tonight, URTV, it's easy. It's not easy me wearing a tie, but this is unique. I think you'll enjoy it. An example of animation, Brett Farkle, a world water bounce champ. Also, another animation I did as a promo for Rapid Raph. Uh, web surfing, you get to watch me surf the web for over an hour in less than three minutes. And finally, Pat currying favor with the horses. Hello, Ralph Roberts here. And I suppose I'd better introduce myself, even though this is my TV show and you probably already know who I am, because you will seldom see me in a suit and tie. And why I'm in a, a suit and tie, one of the, the things that guides my life is being informal. I am extremely informal most of the time. Does your TV require you to dress up? Only on occasion. Uh, today I'm helping Richard Bernier host a show where we interview a candidate for governor of North Carolina and I was informed that suit and tie was required. So this is the one or two times a year that I wear a that I wear a suit and tie and that I dress up and I thought I'd record it on film so you could see it because again it's unique. <laughs> it's very unique. Oh, why was the uh, tie? Why was the tie invented? Good question. I don't know. What purpose does it serve? Hmm, I don't know. But it's traditional. For males at least, if you want to look dressed up, you wear a tie. And people think you're somebody important. Well, I'm somebody important all the time, even when I don't wear a tie, as far as I'm concerned. But today, I'm wearing a tie. Thought you'd like to see it. But don't get used to this look. Uh-uh. Don't get used to this look. So uh, here I am. i am got a few minutes before I leave, so I thought I would... Uh, make a record of this for posterity, perhaps even for prosperity. They say people who wear ties make more money. I'm not getting paid for this gig today, so I'm not sure that that's a valid concept, but we'll try it and see. Maybe somebody will throw some money at me as I walk through the door of the, of, of the studio or something. I don't know. It's worth, worth a shot, right? You'd do it, yes. So, uh, anyway, we're still in my studio here in Alexander, and I've got a green screen behind me just so I can uh, add stuff if I want to. If I scoot back, that's one way to, <laughs> to do zoom. I'm rolling my chair forward and backward, so that, uh, that seems to work pretty well. Uh, don't have a camera person right now, so I'm having to do this myself. And uh, let's see, we've been recording. Oh, I can actually read the screen from here. The little monitor screen on the camera, which is about EA big, not very big, but adequate. If you're about three or four feet away from it like I am, I can tell I've been talking for three minutes and 29 seconds. Nope, three minutes and, thir th three minutes and 31. Well, you get the idea, right? So I'll go back a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Uh, URTV, let's talk about that a little bit since we're just talking. URTV is a tremendous amount of fun. I started producing programs for URTV in November of 2006. Uh, in the intervening time, it's now February the 29th, 2008, leap day on leap year. I've produced something over 200, 200 hours of video for URTV. Why did I do it? Because I take having fun seriously and producing for URTV is an incredible amount of fun. But it, it does intimidate some people, I realize. It, it looks to be a highly technical thing, producing video like I'm doing here, but it's not really. Uh, Video technologies, like any other technology, using a computer or anything, it only looks complicated. It's really actually pretty simple. Once you from, get familiar with it, how long does that take? A week or two of doing things. 
and then you start picking it up and getting in the habit and uh, not having any trouble. You know, I can sit here and talk and uh, uh, move back and forth. What, what I just did, I realized that I was center on the camera. There's something called the rule of thirds uh, in photography, and video is photography also, that says a picture looks more interesting to the viewer if, it's like, if the uh, main subject of the photograph, in this case the main subject of the video, me, is a little bit off center. So I, I moved over to make it more interesting. Hey, that's some of the simple things you learn, you know, and it's, uh, uh, let me give you some quick analogies, just show you how simple video is. Uh, what makes a video look professional as opposed to a jerky amateur type thing that we all do when we first start with video cameras? Uh, three things, really. And two of them will override the other one even. The first is light. Cameras love light. Uh, cameras see differently than the human eye does. That They see things in a lot greater shades of contrast. So if you're not properly lit, you have uh, really sharp shadows and it doesn't look good. Uh, <clears throat> in my case I have quite a bit of light on me right now and it's uh, not lit perfectly but it's lit well enough where it looks professional. The second thing is sound. Uh, too many people when they first start uh, use cheap video cameras and they use the little microphones that are uh, built into the cameras and those are usually junk. Uh, they're just an extra feature attacked under the camera to help sell it. You really need an external microphone, a good microphone that will pick you up and, and make vi uh, sound uh, that level where it's understandable and, and really the old cliche is sound is 70% of your, of your video. 70%. That means you can get away with a lot of stuff if you got good sound. So, uh, have a good microphone. And, and the third thing is content. You know, uh, a video should be about something. Uh, this video is primarily about me wearing a tie, but I'm using it as an excuse to, to help uh, give you some tips on video. So, uh, but light, sound, and reasonably good content and you have a professional video and you can show it on TV. Now, <clears throat> breaking into uh, television is really hard and it takes a lot of years. Unless you go the public access TV route, uh, URTV, which we're on here, is a uh, public access television channel. That means that by its charter, if you bring in a program and it meets the, uh, the basic criteria, you know, it can't be obscene or, uh, or racist or, or something like that, but if it meets the basic criteria, uh, the station has to show it. They can't say no. Do I need to repeat that? If you bring it, they'll play it on TV. Now, where else can you get experience like that for it? practically no money. Now, you do need to be a member of, uh, of URTV to be able to do this. The, uh, uh, there's a varying uh, rate schedule for, for dues, but for a, the, a general public type member like me, it's $50 a year. Now, some TV prog uh, programs, some TV shows have budgets of millions of dollars. We have a budget of $50 a year for everything we can show. Anything we shoot, we can show on TV. Now that's a good deal. If you don't understand that, you need to think again, $50 for a year. If you're a student, uh, uh, you get a little bit, uh, a little bit less rate and so forth. Uh, nonprofits can join and have several members for one price. So it's, uh, it's really, probably the, the best thing since sliced bread and since processed bread is not good for you, it's probably even better than that. So you really, really need to look into this. 
Uh, there's a couple of places you can find out more information about producing for URTV. One is URTV.org, and I hope I don't have to spell URTV for you. U-R-T-V. Okay, write that down so you don't forget it. URTV.org, O-R-G. That's the main website. There's also another site, uh, URTV Forums, F-O-R-U-M-S, URTVForums.org, and that's the community bulletin board that we run. Uh, actually, I run it. I'm the webmaster for uh, uh, the community of producers and viewers of URTV. Even if you're not interested in producing for URTV, uh, come to the forums because we also in encourage just regular viewers to come in and, and talk about the programs they like and why they like them and the programs they don't like and how we can improve them. So you're, you're, you're welcome in any role. So please come see us okay this is uh, let's zoom in here <laughs> I'm rolling the chair again oops that didn't focus just right uh, okay I've been talking for about 11 minutes and six seconds according to that I'll just zoom back out this is uh, a kludgy way of doing it but it works now I'm not why don't I go up to this side <laughs> I'm just rolling the chair back and forth. Of course, I've got a green screen behind me, so I'll have uh, an interesting looking background. And anyway, so to sum up, I seldom wear a tie. A, that's A. B, joining URTV is awfully easy. And C, making video is very easy. Light, sound, content. Hey, this stuff isn't brain surgery, folks, so join us. URTV, Channel 20, Asheville, North Carolina, in the land of the sky. Thanks for watching. I've always learned by playing with various techniques, and right now I'm learning animation following a short piece that I did just for fun, but also I learned a lot from it. Enjoy.
that was neat. But now I use my animation program to do something a little bit more practical. A promo for my other TV show, Rapid Ralph Runs the Roads, mixing animation and video. Here's time lapse of me surfing the internet over an hour condensed into about three minutes.
my wife Pat, who's co-producer of this show and also a member producer of URTV, Channel 20 here in Asheville, North Carolina. Enjoy is currying the horses out here on the farm in Alexander and the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains of Western North Carolina. This is in February, but the day had warmed up for a change and we'd been having snow and cold weather and the horses' uh, coats had got a little matted. And she likes doing it and I enjoy watching her. And I also used it as an excuse to try some uh, shooting with manual settings on the camera. I'm learning that too many people just flip their video cameras on alto and start shooting and you really lose a lot of richness and, uh, and just plain photographic quality by doing that. So I'm trying to overcome it. That's Penny looking at us. Uh, she's named that because she's a copper copper color and blaze is uh, the other horse yeah, he's black but he's got a white blaze on the, on his forehead so the name is pretty obvious they enjoy the attention big old babies but they they wonderful some horses are just have greater personality than than some people <laughs> and these two are that way they're very, very easy to get along with and live with. I'm really quite a distance away, about uh, over 100 feet, which shows you how good my telephoto lens is on the camera where I can reach out and, and get an image like this. And I didn't want to get too close because the, uh, the ground's pretty rough going over there and I had the camera mounted on one of my rolling tripods so I just rolled it outside of my office and I'm set up in the parking lot looking out towards the pasture. It's a pretty windy day in fact I left the camera setting filming this and went inside to get a cup of coffee. I like coffee, I drink lots of coffee. <laughs> uh, that was one place where I didn't cut it out and maybe that was my problem panning, I didn't have the uh, lever flipped all the way off for free panning. Panning is when you move from side to side. Tilt is when you go up and down on, in shooting video. And zoom is when you zoom out like that. And if I wasn't experimenting with other things, I'd normally edit out the little rough places like that. That's a, that's a power line in the uh, <clears throat> foreground that runs down to our barn, one of our barns, and the uh, concrete tank at the lower right of the screen there is a water tank. When we had cows back years ago, we used the water tank for them, and now the horses drink from it. Penny's feeling ignored, I think, but Pat will get to her shortly. There's a lot of wind, too. Uh, but as I started to tell you, when I went inside to get coffee, I left the camera shooting and I came back out. And I, I just changed uh, lens aperture there. I'll tell you about that in a moment. But when I came back out, the camera, the wind had swung the camera around. It was pointing in a different direction. <clears throat> it's on rollers and I'd only locked one wheel. So it was, the wind was able to pivot the camera. <clears throat> it's an expensive camera. I shouldn't shouldn't have done that, should have made sure I had all three wheels locked down, but live and learn. But back to changing aperture, you may notice the color got a little bit better. And that's because I adjusted the uh, aperture of the camera. The aperture is the, the, the hole that the light goes through uh, that's inside the lens of the camera. And just like on a still camera, you adjust the aperture depending on the amount of light and the depth of field you want to get and several other things. Now one thing, I'm at the extreme end of the range so either the wind or me brushing it against the camera looking at stuff, uh, uh, checking the settings is causing it to bounce just a little bit. And that's not perfect focus. Uh, all this is practice and I'm 
generous enough to share it with you so I'm not trying for perfect video here I'm, I'm looking for other things in, in this case I was looking for the color since we're in the winter we don't have a lot of green and uh, there are a lot of browns and stuff so I'm trying to bring out what green there is in the grass and uh, just make the uh, picture look a little bit more interesting and I normally would not use footage like this where the focus is off it's just slightly off but uh, again this is just an experiment and I thought you'd enjoy watching the horses like I do Blaze is a little skittish sometimes but he sure likes to be curried and he needs it too look at all the hair that Pat's pulling out of the comb that's uh it, Blaze is starting to shed his winter coat so a, a lot more so than Penny, so there's a lot, a lot more hair coming off of him. And he gets matted up in his coat, and it just looks awful. And I know he doesn't like it, so he enjoys being groomed. Yes, he's quite a good horse. If you don't believe me, just ask him. He'll be glad to expound upon the subject. And especially if you have a horse treat in your hand. Now this is uh, my neighbor way up on the hill mowing. A little early to be mowing, but I uh, thought I'd shoot it just to see what, how it came out. <clears throat> that was a long way away. And Blaze is still getting good treatment. Uh, but Penny will come around, she gets her turn too. You got to be fair. Now this is an example of depth of field that's pennies in focus, but blaze and pad are not. That's called depth of field. It's looking across my driveways and that's my Stanley Road. And looking at the wind moving the pine trees right across the road. As I told you earlier, it is a wind day. A windy day. A wind day. So... Uh, I wanted to get that in and also experiment with the, the focus and the aperture and it makes quite a difference look at the red on my neighbor's house up there as I pan across and here's a close-up now this is using the digital extender which turns my lens into a 30x lens or 30 times and as we zoom out, you'll be able to see just how far away that was and how close I got. I love manual shooting. Look at the blue of the sky. And I adjusted for that on purpose. Wonderful deep blue. And the rest of the colors are nice and rich also. This is a beautiful view of our trash being focused through uh, one of the maple trees. Every Sunday evening we put our trash out on the roads, our offerings to the gods of trash. And they usually accept it and by the next morning the trash has disappeared. Usually pretty early, earlier than I get up. I sometimes hear a large truck coming down the road just before it disappears, but I'm sure that has nothing to do with it. <laughs> That's about 100 feet away from the parking lot. And now we're looking at Penny. Penny's getting her turn now. And Blaze. Of course, Blaze is a little jealous. He wants to see what's going on. And, oh, he's eating a horse treat. Go to RalphWRoberts.com to see this show again.